So today I am having an interview with The Guardian and having some photos taken. For The Guardian, for talk to you guys back in May last year, I think. There's been a massive turning point, positive turning point in women's cycling mm -hmm. and um, a lot more girls and women are able to ride full time now, mm -hmm. which is amazing mm -hmm. because I think a few years ago, I'm, I'm plucking the figure out of my head, but 80% maybe were working as well. Maybe not full time, course, but they're yeah. having to work mm -hmm. as well because mm -hmm. they couldn't afford to mm -hmm. be full time. Mm -hmm. So was it a fairly clear cut decision for you to stay? Um, I had other options, but yeah, it was the best sort of decision for me. Obviously I'm focusing on the track until Rio, so they give me a lot of um, support with that and you know, don't sort of force me into doing any races that I don't want to and you know, support my programme on the track and you know, give sort of British cycling um, sort of control over me, which not a lot of teams would do. Um, and then when I do race on the road, you know, give me all the support I need. Viable that you might become a road, cycl road cyclist as well as track? See, because I'm an endurance track rider, I've always had to train and race on the road to help the track. And it's something I've always really enjoyed, so I've always sort of had it in the back of my mind that I would enjoy being a professional road rider in the future, um, sort of as my number one, because obviously it's always been track. But I've always loved the road as well. Um, so yeah, I think future-wise, I could potentially have a future on the road as well. But for now, for sure, and definitely until Rio, I'm focused 100% on the track. As a 14-year-old girl, it was amazing how self-motivated I was. And before I started cycling as well, I was a swimmer and runner, and it sticks in my mind quite a lot that my parents were so supportive of me and would take me to training sessions, but they said, for the, say, 5am sessions that I, I would do before school, they said, you know, we're happy to take you, but you have to wake us up. And I thought that was really good because I'd have to be self-motivated to set my alarm and get up. And that would show that I would be I, I'm the one that wanted to do it. It wasn't them that were forcing me to do it. And were there some mornings where you just put the alarm? Not <laughs> once. That so? Not once. I'd always been motivated in sport and always given my best, you know, and PE, I remember I always wanted to win cross country mm. races, athletics mm. races, um, and I always loved pushing myself. Sort of moments within the Olympics, around the Olympics, so days after and before, but the specific event is really, really clear. Me. We've got montages that we um, got given before, I think the world's in Appledore and the world's in Melbourne and before the Olympics and I tend to watch them say before um, I race because they're just really motivating and it sort of gives me goosebumps and that brings back memories but never really the Olympics, my mum and dad watch it every now and again. If I finished a elite race athlete career mm. I could see myself going to I don't know, TV or mm -hmm. commentary. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's not think about that yet. Nah. Just stick to it. Yeah, to you're busy enough. Today's gone very well. I rode my bike this morning and then had an interview with The Guardian and some pictures. Um, and I think we've got everything, so it's a wrap.